So good morning everybody. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, a new topic which some of you I think may have seen before but it's supposed to be new for everybody and that is called logarithms. I had briefly introduced the idea of logarithms yesterday actually uh, showing you the ultimate reason why we need uh, logarithms um, but I had said that there's a fairly long story to getting to that ultimate uh, end point so we're gonna start that story today and see how far we can get um, so basically what is a logarithm uh, a logarithm is an inverse function of an exponential so just like every other function we've seen square root is a opposite or inverse of a x squared uh, cube root is the inverse of a cube um, arc sine is the inverse of sine every function has an inverse function in calculus you're going to learn about the derivative the inverse function of a derivative is an integral so every function has an inverse uh, and the job of an inverse function is pretty much always the same it's to destroy the function that it's affecting and pull out the argument or the uh, variable so um, hoping my tech works here uh, so if I give you y is equal to 3 to the power of x right here and I ask you to find the inverse function so how did we find inverse functions before well we interchanged the x and the y position in the equation and then we re-isolated the y so nothing changes here it's the exact same procedure that we used to follow the the issue is uh, when this was first done uh, there was no symbol for an inverse function of this uh, situation here okay so they had to create one just like they had to create the symbol for a square root and the um, accepted um, standard was uh, this function here the logarithm so what we're gonna do is we're gonna log both sides now something I mentioned briefly yesterday and just to be a little bit more clear today if you want to do a logarithm of a base for now and this is going to change later but for now we're always going to use a logarithm that has the exact same base as whatever base is in the uh, exponential uh, to start with so the base is a 3 here so if you look down at what I did I just took this equation and I, lo I, I did a log base 3 of both sides so let me scroll up a little bit here now when you do a log base 3 of a 3 to the y this is that inverse function of a function that destroy each other and pull out the argument and in this case the argument is y the word argument is a mathematical term that's sometimes used to just say what is contained within the exponential um, and in this case that that thing is the y okay so look at what happens from this line to this line on this side this has all been destroyed and has been converted into y okay so on the right hand side that's what happens an inverse function of a function destroys the function and pulls out the argument on the left hand side we end up with a mathematical expression because we have to do the same thing on both sides of log base 3 of x okay I've heard this um, said multiple times folks uh, multiple different ways sorry uh, you can say log of x to a base of 3 I like to say log base 3 of x uh, it doesn't really matter okay both of those uh, ways of saying it is the same the most important thing here though is the fact that uh, we are destroying a function um, and pulling out the argument okay so it's very very similar to and I I just want to make sure this is as clear as possible um, if you had x squared equals 7 you square root x squared you square root 7 and that pulls out x and whatever is left on this side is the answer okay so right here an inverse function of a function pulls out the argument which is x right here an inverse function of a function destroys the argument and pulls out y in this case okay so this is how the inverse function works now I'm technically supposed to spend some time graphing logarithmic functions with you um, I, I, I don't want to do that um, 
Maybe just quickly though, 3 to the y would look like this. If we um, remember how we graph inverse functions, they are a reflection with respect to the uh, y equals x graph. So a logarithmic function would be that reflection. So it would look something like this, okay? So uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that. Desmos is our friend. If we need to graph logarithms, we'll, we'll go to Desmos. But the reality is, for right now, it's not really that important. Just to mention, though, that all of the transformations for our graphs that we saw would also exist for logarithms as well. We can slide them up and down, left and right, uh, stretch them and compress them in, in both horizontal and vertical directions. All of that stuff still exists, but I actually don't, I just don't want to waste, well, sorry, it's not a waste of time, but I don't want to spend the time uh, doing it, okay? So uh, let's move on. Uh, so as I mentioned uh, just on, this, on the other slide, uh, and I want this in your note, um, for every different base, there exists a log base B with that same base, okay? So, um, and I'll be, I'll be posting this to the Google Classroom, and that's what I mean by the note, so you can always just print this off or look at it if you need it later on, okay? Uh, so here's an example and I'm going to go to handwriting here because I find it's a little bit faster um, than typing. Uh, rewrite the following exponential expressions as logarithmic expressions. Now, when I show this, I like to show it the long way. I want to reinforce the idea of using um, inverse functions on both sides. There is a shortcut to this. You can use the shortcut when you're comfortable with it, okay? But I am going to continuously use the inverse function idea until it's really sunk in uh, and then maybe we can discuss using the shortcut, okay? So if you know the shortcut, that's great, but I'm going to be doing it the long way here. So when you look at an exponential like this, there is always a way of converting any kind of exponential into a logarithm, all right? So how do you do that? Well, you look at the base uh, <laughs> and you ask yourself, well, what logarithm am I going to use? So I'm going to use a logarithm base 2 on both sides because it's a base of 2, okay? And then we just write in the both sides. So this is like square rooting both sides if it was a x squared scenario, okay? We're doing the inverse function of both sides, all right? Then I want you to understand what does this side do? Well, it's an inverse function of a function. What is the argument? The argument is 3. So everything log 2, 2 gets destroyed, and the only thing that gets pulled out of this side, and I'm going to change colors to show this, is the 3. Okay? That is the argument. So it just gets pulled right out of there. And on this side, we just write log base 2 of 8. Okay, so the log base 2 of 8 is 3. Now, I'm going to probably explain this a little bit more on the next slide as well, but let's just start to analyze, well, what, what kind of answer does a logarithm give us then? Well, doesn't a logarithm give us an exponent? And th that's what a logarithm does, is it gives you an exponent. Okay, so let me briefly hint at one of the shortcuts Okay, the base is 2 in the original expression right here. The base is 2. Look at the base of the logarithm here. The answer was 8 in the above expression. The answer goes as the thing inside the logarithm. And the exponent becomes the answer. Now, I frankly find that confusing, <laughs> but that's one of the shortcuts. It's remembering the pattern that this turns into when you write it this way. I don't like that. I would much rather use a mathematical way of finding it, which is basically like I said, if you, if you compare it to a square root, square rooting an x squared, okay? I'm log basing two, two to the three, and that destroys the two to the three and pulls out the argument. And whatever I do on one side of the equation, I do on the other side of the equation. 
Okay, so if we look at the next one, I'm always having trouble scrolling down, I'm not sure why. Okay, the next one is a base of three. So it's three to the four equals 81. Well, what if I ask you to write that as a logarithmic expression? Now, some of you may already be able to jump down to the, uh, the shortcut, but I am going to show you the long way. We're gonna do log base three on both sides. That is the inverse function of three to the power of whatever. Everything else stays the same in the expression. But what does log base three of three to the four do? It's an inverse function of a function, pulls out the argument, the argument is four. And now we have a way of rewriting any exponential into a logarithm. Okay. So that's the setup of how we can use a logarithm to rewrite an exponential. That's one of the tools that we can use logarithms for. Let's move on to the next slide. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, the answer to a logarithm is therefore an exponent. Okay. Now, these, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the previous slide for a second. These ones are a little bit interesting uh, because we already, like, this is not anything that we need to solve. 2 to the power of 3 equals 8 is already basically solved, okay? It was just to introduce the idea that you can go back and forth between an exponential and a logarithmic format. This is where things get a little bit more interesting. Could you solve log base 5 of 25, okay? Now, there's, again, there's a couple of ways that we can do this, um, but now we're gonna actually start thinking about, could we do it a little bit faster than writing out all the steps, all right? And this is the hint or the trick that I ask students to try to remember when you're looking at a logarithm. What we're trying to do, I'm gonna put a little box right here beside the five. And that box represents the exponent of five. Five is the base, the box is the exponent. And what you're basically being asked to do is say five to the what equals 25. Okay, so if you can always imagine that there's a little exponent right beside the base and ask yourself five, the base value, five to the what equals the number that's in the logarithm, that's gonna be the answer. Okay, so five to the what equals 25, five to the two equals 25. If we look at B over here, again, I'm going to change color so it doesn't always look the same. 4 to the what equals 64. If you pretend there's a little exponent there, 4 to the what power equals 64. I believe that's 3, if I'm remembering correctly. If we look down here at C, 10 to the what equals 1,000. So your answer is always an exponent like that. If you just pretend there's an exponent there, I find it's much easier to start to understand how uh, uh, logarithms work. And that answer would be three. Okay, 10 times 10 times 10 is, is three. Now in D, it's still the same idea. I'm running out of colors here, so I'm just gonna go back to red. I'm still looking for an exponent, but just to show you how things can get a little bit interesting, uh, this is a 1 over 1,000. Now, we've seen that when there's fractions and we're dealing with exponents, that we usually have to flip the, uh, the thing around, upside down, right? So I'm going to rewrite this underneath here just to help you see what's going on. It would be log base 10 of 1,000 to the negative 1, flipping that upside down. Now, 1,000... I have to write as a base of 10, okay? That's basically what we were doing up here too. We were, we were changing 64 into four to the power of three in our head. We were changing 25 to five squared in our head. What is 1000 as a base of 10? It's 10 to the three, which we just saw in the previous example right here, okay? But that's all to the negative one. So combining those two powers together, that's 10 to the negative three. Could you have seen right from this one over 1000 
that 1 over 1,000 can be written as 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so I showed all the steps here so you could see exactly how the thought process goes. But 1,000 on the bottom can still be changed into a 10 to the 3, and when I flip it up upside down, it becomes 10 to the negative 3. So 10 to the what equals 1 over 1,000? It would be negative 3. Okay? So that's the, the beautiful thing about logarithms, is they can answer what the exponent is um, for to get the specific value that's inside the, lo the logarithm itself. So I'm just going to pause there for a second, let you look at that a little bit more. Uh, if you use my little trick here, I think it will help enormously. And then the idea is just to um, break your number inside the logarithm down into a base of the base of the logarithm, and then try to figure out the exponent that would give you the answer. Are there any pressing questions right now? Seeing no questions, I'm going to continue on to the next slide. And remember, if you do have questions, email is the best way to get a hold of me. So what if I ask you to reverse things here? What if I give you a logarithm? And you know what? I'm just going to hide the answer here. Okay. So what if I give you a logarithm and then you are asked to write it in exponential form? So this is the reverse of the first part of the lesson today. Now I'm giving you this expression as a logarithm, log base 5 of 25 equals 2. Could you rewrite it in exponential form? Well, I want to use the exact same concept of an inverse function destroys a function. And this is a little bit weirder, okay? So I'm going to take my time on this one. Uh, and again, there is a shortcut for this, but... Um, I want to show you the mathematical way of doing it. So how would I destroy a log base 5 of 25 to be able to find my answer? Well, what is the inverse of a logarithm? Well, if the logarithm is an inverse of an exponential, that means an exponential has to be the inverse of a logarithm. So here's the inverse function right here, okay? We have a base of 5 in our logarithm. Well, the inverse would be 5 to the power of something. How do we apply that to both sides of this equation mathematically? Well, the way you would do that is interesting. Look at what happens to the log base 5 of 25. I am raising it as a power to a base of 5. And this is a weird one. This is still square rooting a square root. Uh, sorry, uh, square rooting an x squared my mistake, okay? It's the same idea. But because the x is in the power of our exponential, that's where the logarithm goes when we're doing the inverse function of that side. And whatever we do on one side, we do on the other side of the equal sign. So what are we going to get? Well, what happens when you take the inverse function of a function? It pulls out the argument. Well, what's the argument? The argument is 25. So the 25 is going to get pulled out and put right next to our equal sign. And on this side, we still just have 5 to the 2. Okay. So we started with 2 is equal to log base 5 of 25. We rewrote that as an exponential. 5 to the 2 equals 25. We did that by raising both sides up into the exponent position with the same base that the logarithm is. I think I have another example coming up here. So let's try this one. I want to rewrite this as an exponential. So again, I'm briefly going to talk about the shortcut, uh, although I, I don't like the shortcut. Normally, teachers don't show this middle step at all. They just jump directly from that one to that one. And they say, well, if it's a base of 5, you put the base of 5. We know the answer to a logarithm is an exponent, so you put the exponent next to the 5, 
and then the thing inside the logarithm just goes here. I don't like that because it's just, here's a series of steps to move things into different positions to get your final answer, and it's not technically mathematical, okay? Um, I'd much rather you understand the idea that we're using an inverse function. So I've got log base 4 of 64 equals 3. What is my base? My base is 4. Okay, my base is 4. So I'm going to put a big 4 here on both sides. And I'm going to raise everything on both sides up into the exponent of both sides. That's how you do an inverse function of a logarithm. Because the inverse function is an exponential, raise the logarithm up into the exponent position. Once you've done that, I'm just going to get rid of this window now. Uh, this is an inverse function of a function. It pulls out the argument. The argument is 64 in this case. That just gets now written right beside the equal sign where we need it. And on this side, we just write 4 to the 3. And now you have a way of going back and forth between a logarithmic e expression to an exponential expression or from an exponential expression to a logarithmic expression. They are um, linked pairs, if you will. Okay, One is the inverse function of the other, and you can write both of them into um, those two different forms. So I'll let that sink in for a couple of seconds. Are there any questions? Do you want me to show another example? How are we doing? Okay, it's looking like most of you are feeling pretty confident with this. Uh, obviously practice you want it one more example? Absolutely. We'll do one more example. So uh, I will do one more. Somebody asked for another example. I'll do one more example. So let's say we did um, uh, log base 10 of um, ten thousand equals four. Okay. So I want to rewrite this into exponential format. I'm going to use this new example as a way to show you uh, a writing shortcut. This is not a shortcut in the math. This is just a writing shortcut. Instead of writing the entire new line, I know that I have to raise the log 10, 10,000 into an exponent position and the 4 into an exponent position. I was shown this by my teacher in high school. Just write a big 10 right here on both sides. <laughs> now I've raised both sides up into the exponent position. Okay? And uh, what does an inverse function of a function do? It pulls out the argument. The argument is always the thing that's inside the logarithm itself. Okay? So that's just going to become our answer on this side. And on this side we have 10 to the power 4. So this is a shortcut that I would uh, accept, and I know some of you can go directly to this, okay? But um, this is a shortcut I would accept. It's a, it's a really easy way of, of doing the raising to the power of, okay? So just put a big 10 there and everything works out. Okay? And again, you will have time to practice this in homework, and if you need more help, I can help you separately. Okay, let's start looking at the laws of logarithms here. So logarithms giving you exponents as answers have laws very similar to the exponent laws. So one of the exponent laws that we see first is what happens if you have 3 to the 4 times 3 to the 7? Well, when you have two bases that are the same, you can add the exponents. Well, there is a corollary to the logarithms for that rule. And this is the first one. 
if you have an addition of two logarithms, can you write that as a logarithm of the two um, arguments multiplying each other? Okay, so does log 2 plus log 3 give the same thing as log 2 times 3? Or the reverse, does log 2 times 3, can that be broken up into a logarithm of 2 plus a logarithm of 3? And the answer is absolutely it does. Now, I want to show you the proof of this. Okay, so the reason I wrote on calculator here, if you actually try logarithm of 6, and this is a base 10, by the way, anytime the logarithm base isn't shown, it is considered a base 10 because that's the button on your calculator. Uh, logarithm of 6 on a calculator and separately do log 2 plus log 3, you are going to get the exact same answer. Okay, so let's, let's show the proof. So in order to show the proof, we're going to introduce some variables here. We're going to introduce the variables m and n, and we're going to say that m is equal to a to the x, and n is equal to a to the y. If I multiply m times n, and what I'm doing here is I'm, um, I'm simulating this multiplication here, okay? So I'm using, I'm using variables to prove that it'll work with any numbers, but where did this m, why am I multiplying m times n? It's to simulate the multiplication in this logarithm here, okay? Well, if I do that on uh, using the variables that I've just set up for m and n uh, on this side, I get a to the x times a to the y, and as I just mentioned a couple of seconds ago, when you multiply two uh, bases that are the same, you can rewrite them as an addition of the exponents, okay? So the x and the y just add together to give a to the x plus y. So in other words, m times n can be written as a to the x plus y. Well, what happens if I log both sides? So if I go back again up here, look at what I did. Oh, sorry about the scrolling. Look at what I did here. I logged two things that are multiplying. So let's do the exact same thing with our m and n. Let's log m and n. Okay, so we're going to take the logarithm of both sides. Now I'm going to start writing this in at this point so that I have the rest of my note written down. So if I log m times n, that means I have to log <coughs> a to the x plus y. Now, because my base is a, I do have to take the log base a of both sides, okay? That's an a. Because you have to use the same logarithm base as uh, the base for now, you have to. Well, what is log base a of a to the x plus y? We just saw that if you take the logarithm of the same base as a base with an exponent that those two are inverse functions of each other. So they cancel out. So uh, we get log a m times n is equal to x plus y. Okay, so the log base a of a to the x plus y cancel out and give you just x plus y. But we had said up here that a to the x was m and a to the y was n. Can we isolate x and y? Well, how would we isolate x? We need a logarithm to isolate x. So if I, I'm going to use a different color here. If I do log base a of a to the x equals log base a of n, 
now have to move this down here. What does log base a of a to the x give? That just gives x because it's an inverse function of a function. So we know that x is equal to log base a of n. And by corollary, we get the exact same result if we do the same steps to a to the y. If I log uh, base a both sides, I'm going to end up with y. Uh, oh, sorry, one of them is supposed to be m here. Which one's supposed to be m? a to the x is m. Sorry about that, folks. Let's just change that to an m. Okay, so I'm glad I caught that. Somebody, I think, mentioned it in chat. Uh, if we do the same thing for a to the y and log base a both sides, we're going to get log base a of n. Well, put this x here and put this y here. We end up with log base a of m times n is equal to log base a of m, which is x, plus log base a of n. And I've just proved for any two things that are multiplying that they can be split up as an addition or vice versa. If you have an addition of two logarithms, you can combine them together to give you a multiplication. Okay? Now that is not an easy proof to follow. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of explain things again really quickly. Because we're multiplying, we're trying to prove that the multiplication of two things inside of a logarithm can be broken up as the addition of two things. We started with m and n, but, and, and you wouldn't be expected to know to make m and n equal to a to the x and a to the y. Um, but that's just part of the proof, okay? And when you multiply those two together, you just add those exponents. Now, if you take the logarithm of both sides, the logarithm of the a to the a x plus y just pulls down the x plus y. But with a little bit of mathematical magic from our original um, expressions of m is equal to a to the x, if you take the logarithm of both sides <coughs> of those original expressions, you end up with a value for x and a value for y that when you sub them back into this equation, they give you the proof. So that's a tough one. I, I am actually not expecting everybody to have understood all of that. But if you do take it a step at a time and reread it a few times uh, in homework, I am kind of hoping that it will start to sink in for those of you who may be struggling with this a little bit. Now, let's take a look at why that could be useful. Okay? And this might actually help you to grasp why we needed to show the proof. So here's an example. What if I asked you to do the log base 3 of 243? So there's a couple of way we could a couple of ways we could do this. Um, you could use my little trick of 3 to the what equals 243, which actually does work out, okay? But sometimes, and, I, and I'm going to, I'm hoping I have an example where it doesn't work out in a second, okay? Um, as easily, anyway. I'm using numbers that are easy here just to, to show you how it could work, okay? Um, 243 can actually be broken up into 3 times 81, so if you divide 243 by 3, you get 3 and 81. That means I could rewrite this logarithm as 3 times 81. And knowing that, from the proof that I just showed you, we could do log base 3 of 3 plus log base 3 of 81. three to the what 
equals 3. 3 to the what equals 81. And my answer is 5. So the idea here is the bigger this number gets, the harder it might be with trial and error to figure out what the, exp what the answer is. Okay? If we can break that number down into smaller numbers that both have a base of 3 possibility, then it just makes it a little easier without a calculator uh, or without trial and error to figure out the final answer. So if you can break up what's inside the logarithm as two things that are multiplying, um, it, does, it, it works out quite nicely. Okay. Let me see if I can find an example of the reverse of that that might th make things even more... Um, and I wasn't thinking about this before, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to figure it out just on the fly here. Yeah, let's try this one. Log base 3 of 6 plus log base 3 of 4.5. Now this might be actually a more realistic scenario because like I said I used a small number here and you could have with trial and error in A in the first example figured out what the answer was okay but look at this one if you use my little trick and put a little power here 3 to the what equals 6 do not say 2 Okay, 3 to the what equals 6. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 to the 2 is 9. There's no way of finding an answer for this one. Same thing here. 3 to the what is equal to 4.5. Sorry, there is a way of finding an answer, but it's with trial and error. Okay, it's not a nice answer. Same thing here. 3 to the what equals 4.5. I can't find an answer without trial and error. But this is an addition. The proof that I just showed you a couple of slides ago says that any addition of logarithms that have the same base can be rewritten as a multiplication of the two arguments. Like this. So I've taken an addition of two logarithms and changed it into a multiplication. Well, what is 6 times 4.5? That's 27. Now when I say 3 to the power of what equals 27, that we can actually do. So since 3 to the power of 3 is 27, my answer is 3. So even though in this statement I wasn't able to directly find an answer without a little bit of headache and trial and error, by changing the addition of the logarithms, into a multiplication that now allows me to actually use this little trick to find the answer and I didn't need a calculator necessarily to do it so this example is a more realistic example of the importance of logarithms or the power of logarithms <laughs> no pun intended Okay, and that's the kind of thing you're going to see more often where you're going to need to know this, uh, this rule. Now, guess what? If there's a sum rule, there's also a difference rule, okay? And I'm going to write it this way. I'm not going to show the proof for this one, all right? Because it's very similar to the proof we just did. And uh, I, I will be showing you, I will be um, attaching a document to the Google Classroom that contains this whole note out of a textbook. Now, by the way, folks, because this is an IB class, this is all grade 12 stuff. So the textbook I'm getting this stuff out of is actually a calculus textbook, okay? Um, but uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll post the PDF of that uh, lesson so that you'll be able to look at the proof yourself if you really want to see it. 
Um, I'm actually not using the Harcourt one. I'm using the Nelson one. So, uh, and it is, there's two, so in your Google Classroom, there's three textbooks in the textbook um, uh, link. Uh, one of them's Harcourt, one of them's Nelson, and the other one's the grade 11 one. This is actually from the Nelson calculus textbook, because that's the textbook I used to teach calculus out of uh, multiple years ago. Um, so what is the difference law? Well, the difference law is this, log base A of M minus log base A of N is equal to the log base A of the division of M over N. So similar, as a little bit of an aside here, if you had A to the M over A to the N, that gives A to the M minus N, okay? The corollary in logarithm form is this one here. If you're subtracting two logarithms, you can change that subtract subtraction into a division. So as an example of that one, if I do the logarithm, let's say uh, base two of 48 minus the logarithm base two of three, on their own, you can't do two to the power of what equals 48 and two to the power of what equals three, okay? But because this is a, subtra a subtraction, using the law that I just showed you, you can divide these two inside one logarithm. And when you do that, you get log base two of 16 and now we can use my little trick of two to the what equals 16. The answer is four. Okay, and I have a few more minutes. I wasn't sure where we'd end up. Um, I think I'm going to show you the last and probably the most important rule, which is the one that I showed you yesterday. Um, my spelling's off today. log base A of M to the P. Well, what does M to the P actually mean? It means log base A of M times M times M P times. Okay, what does a power mean? A power means just multiple multiplications, okay? But we've already seen the multiplication rule. So using the multiplication law, couldn't I rewrite log base A of M times M times M as log base A of M plus log base A of M plus log base A of M P times. The multiplication inside of a logarithm law states that you can break it up into a whole bunch of, of additions. And this is also introducing the fact that if you have multiple things multiplying inside of a logarithm, you can break it up into multiple additions, okay? Well, doesn't this, like if you had x squared plus x squared plus x squared, wouldn't that just be 3x squared? Okay, so if you have it doing it p times, wouldn't this just give p times log base a of m? So 
So the summary to that is log base A of M to the P is equal to P times log base A to the M. And out of all of the laws that I showed you today, this is the one you're going to use probably the most often because this is the one we were using yesterday. This allows you with any logarithm of any base to pull the exponent down in front and get it next to the equal sign where you might need it to isolate. Okay, so for example, if you had um, 4 is equal to 3 to the x, just like we had scenarios similar to yesterday, this is this scenario right here. I want to pull the p down in front. So if we put a log in both sides, and this is a log base 10, because that's the only one, well, sorry, one of the only two that you have on your calculators, usually, on both sides, it pulls the exponent down in front. The p comes down in front. p in this case is x. And now you can isolate x. Which I'm not going to do because you were doing it probably yesterday in some of the questions. Okay. So. We've seen three laws of logarithms today. The product or addition law. Uh, where is it? Right here. Okay, so product and addition law. The difference law, which I showed you one example of. And the most important law, in my opinion, the power law, or the down in front rule, which is what I was calling it yesterday. And those are the three laws that you're going to be practicing in homework tonight. Along with writing exponents in logarithm form and logarithms in exponent form, which is what we started with as those examples. And I'm hoping by tomorrow you're going to have more or less mastered all of those concepts. Okay? So um, that pretty much brings us to the end of today's lesson. I will try to get the a YouTube video up as fast as possible, but it always takes a little bit of time to process those videos. So sometimes they're only coming up later at night. However, you can always go watch the video on Twitch if you so choose. Uh, if you need to see it again, I will post the note right away. So I'm going to say bye for the recording.